Hey friends, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Bridget and I make home and DIY content here on YouTube. If you're looking for budget-friendly tips and projects to make your space feel like home, you've come to the right place. I've got some great projects planned for 2022, so if you want to stay in the loop, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. In my last video of 2021, I announced the 100 YouTube subscribers giveaway, and in the few weeks since, the channel has grown so much, so I wanna give an official welcome to everyone who has recently joined the Bye Bridget YouTube fam. I'm thrilled you're here, and I hope my videos inspire and motivate you. Let's jump in. I really started getting into DIY projects about a year and a half before I launched my YouTube channel, so I thought a fun way to start off 2022 would be to give you a mini tour around my apartment and show you some of my favorite projects and hacks that predate my YouTube days. This video will be a little more of a casual vlog style one, so let me know in the comments if you enjoy this unscripted style. Let's check out the first project. First up, we have a view that you guys see literally every single intro and outro with these custom shelves that I built about a year ago. I love them so much because they're incredibly simple to make. I just used some lumber and I sanded, stained, and then sealed it with polyacrylic. And then I got these very inexpensive corner brackets, spray painted them, sorry, the camera's out of focus, <laughs> and then hand painted the screws. And the nice thing about this is that it's high enough off the ground that my cats cannot reach these plants, but they're also close enough to a window to get really good natural light. So I love these shelves, one of my earlier projects, and they are just fantastic. Also in my living room, I have this Ikea hack that I did a while back. It's just a regular old bookshelf, and then I grabbed this lumber. It was less than five bucks for this, which I know these days is like insane, so I was super grateful. And I just cut these two doors and then added on some knobs. I sealed them, but I actually didn't stain them because I really liked the natural color they were. And what I love most about this is I can hide my kind of ugly, less attractive plant care supplies and some books books that I don't want on display, but yet I still left the top shelf open so that I could have certain things out in the open, and I just love the way that it looks overall. Okay, so I'm sure you've heard the cheesy phrase that eyes are the window to the soul, and if we're just gonna stick with that analogy for a second with windows being compared to eyes, I would have to say that curtains are the eyebrows to the eyes, to the windows, to the soul. <laughs> I don't know if any of this is making sense. What I'm trying to say is window treatments are super essential and windows can kind of look a little bit empty without them. So I sewed these curtains for myself a while back and you'll notice they are hung super high which draws your eye upward and then they send all the way down to the floor. It just gives the illusion of a taller ceiling and a larger space. And these particular ones I actually have hung so that they are just outside the window. They don't even cover up any of the light and you'll notice that they're also not super wide. These are not functional curtains. You could of course make them wider, but for the purposes of my space, I just wanted them to frame the window and then when I really need to, I use the shades to close it. But I love the look that they give and it just helps make this apartment really feel like a home. You'll notice below the window, I have this thrifted chest here that also serves as a bench. This was actually a toy chest once upon a time, but now if you see, we just use it to store shoes, so super simple. And what I DIY'd was this cushion. I just got some foam from Joanne Fabrics, grabbed some fabric, sorry, not super smooth right now, <laughs> but, and sewed a quick cover for it. And this makes it much more comfortable to sit on. And it also just lightens it up a bit so that it's not completely this dark stained wood. Even though that wood is gorgeous and plays nicely with the other pieces in the living room, I just really love the soft touch of the fabric. This next DIY is actually one that I did a couple years ago with my sister. It was very simple. We just screwed together these three boards and stained them and then used a silhouette vinyl cutter to make a stencil and painted on Mircevini, which just means welcome. And then we added on these hooks that we found at Hobby Lobby. And you can see I've got kind of the uglier supplies hidden by the curtain. And I just love the warmth that this adds to the space and it's super practical. 
This ottoman is another one of my very early DIYs. I did not build it from scratch, but I did reupholster the entire thing, and I think it turned out really beautiful. I was actually able to go to a place where they can take the fabric you choose and cover buttons as well. So this turned out super gorgeous. And my favorite part is that it's a storage ottoman, so I can store these blankets inside of it. You can see here where I stapled it. It looks a little janky, but honestly, it is holding up really, really great, and I absolutely absolutely love this piece. I had a ton of leftover fabric after I had reupholstered this ottoman, so I used some of that to also reupholster the seat cushion of this chair that I found for only $7 at the thrift store, and I really, really love how it came out. Originally, the entire chair was the super warm kind of honey color, but I painted some of it black and left some of it that stained color, and honestly, the whole thing just ties in so well with the rest of my living room, and I love the end result. If you've seen my first ever YouTube video, you might recognize the method of taking a table runner that you love, sewing it into kind of a loop shape and using it to hide an ugly cover pot for plants. But the real star of the show down here is actually not that, it is the dresser itself that it is sitting on. This was a really ugly kind of honey oak color and I honestly hated it for years. But finally I decided, hey, instead of replacing it, why don't I just give it a fresh coat of paint and add some hardware onto it. and honestly, Honestly, it is these little tiny details that make such a difference and turn something from honestly what felt like a throwaway piece to something really beautiful that I love in my home. Dramatic change in lighting, sorry about that, but we have moved into my bathroom where I've got this huge piece that I made a while ago. This is arguably one of my favorites that I've ever made just because it is beautiful. I used peel and stick wallpaper on the background here, and it is also really, really functional. As you can see, of course, I've got a shelf on top, these little pegs where I can hang things, and I love that this serves as like a huge statement piece in my bathroom, which is not a place that people would usually think to put artwork, but I think I think it just adds so much to the space. We're getting up close and personal with the toilet for a sec. Sorry guys, <laughs> but it's because I wanted to show you this other little custom storage piece that I built. I got this lumber as well for less than five bucks for all of it. And each of the baskets were from five below. So the entire thing was only about $20 because I had the other stuff on hand. And it is just so functional and nice with storage. I'm able to put things that I use frequently in here and I just love the entire thing. So this one was actually another thrift flip, and when I found it, it was just this frame here, the top and bottom. There were no boards or shelving in there, but I custom made those, and I sanded the whole thing down and restained it in a color that I really like. And now it is perfect in my kitchen because it can hold my air fryer and instant pots. And honestly, I would definitely recommend getting or building a bar cart if you're looking for more kitchen storage, because it's it is so convenient and it rolls right out of the way if I need to clean or anything and honestly it is just wonderful to have. This little dresser is another Ikea hack that I did pretty early on. You can see there's a few areas where I need to touch up the paint, but this one was pretty straightforward and I really, really loved it. I use it all the time and it is one of the cheapest dressers you can find at Ikea. So I highly recommend hacking it, painting it, staining it or something if you want to customize your space. This piece of artwork is one that I actually found at a flea market and it was only $30 for it, which is impressive because it is actually quite large, but the frame on it, I really did not like. It was just kind of a gross color and it had a bunch of dents and dings in it. So I just used wood filler to kind of fill in all those spots and then sanded it down and repainted all of these black sections here and then used some rub and buff to touch up the gold. And honestly, it looks so much better in my home and I love that it was only only $30 from a flea market. For this last project, I recruited my husband to set it up just so you can see the process before I walk you through what exactly it is.
This project is probably my favorite of all of my DIYs. I didn't have a template or anything for it. I designed it all in my head and just made it come to life, which I think is super cool. But this is a puzzle box that turns into a puzzle table. I love that it's slanted so that if you want, you can like watch TV or something while you do puzzles. And the best part about it is that when everything is put back inside here, it can be stored upright and your pieces won't shift around at all. So that's what we do because we have a small apartment, but we love doing puzzles and we just don't have the space to have a puzzle table that's up all the time, but we really want to be able to do them and then put them away and have everything stay put. And this one right here is a 2000 piece puzzle, so it is enormous. It takes up the whole thing, but usually with the smaller puzzles, we can just have the spare pieces that we're sorting on one of these and we can set it right on there so you don't have to have these floating around. But either way, you can make it work and it is just super easy to set up and collapse and <laughs> you can see our, our cats love it <laughs> and it is again probably my favorite DIY that I've ever done and if you're interested in this one definitely let me know in the comments I would be happy to do a tutorial and make another one of these but I am just super happy with it and I hope you guys enjoy it and here's my wonderful husband again showing how easy it is to put everything away again for convenient storage Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'd love to hear down in the comments which project was your favorite from today's video. And as always, don't forget to give this video a like and hit the subscribe button for more content. See you next time.